Okay, we'll get started. Hello, welcome to Neota Network. My name is Mark Tyndall. I'm VP Markets and Growth for Asia Pacific at Neota Logic. And I'm very honoured to have the job of, in uh, of introducing Danielle Emerson from HSF, Herbert Smith Free Hills today. Danielle is the innovation lead uh, for Australia and Asia at HSF. And essentially, Danielle's at the forefront of improving legal service delivery and developing new products and services that drive um, innovation at the firm and also that all important culture of innovation at HSF. So today, Danielle's going to talk about demonstrating impact, a really key theme and uh, the subject of a lot of questions today during our other sessions. And I think she's going to talk a bit about how measurement and impact is undertaken at HSF. So in my former life, I worked with Danielle. And at that time, Danny, you were helping to transform how kind of corporate transactional matter services were delivered and measured and improved. And it always struck me on a personal note how you were able to lead the strategic um, as well as facilitate the detail of innovating uh, innovation in the law firm. So it's been great that we still work together in these efforts to innovate. Definitely. Danielle, I'm going to throw it to you. That's enough of an introduction. I could talk a lot <laughs> yeah, about your great you. work, but please <laughs> take it away. And I'll, if it, people have questions, please throw them in the Q&A and I'll put them to Danielle towards the end of the, the time we've got today. Great. And it's, it's funny that you, you pick on that point about the difference between strategy and detail because that will be mentioned a little bit in here. So I will be talking about maximising and measuring impact. I, I do realise I'm going to try to, probably touch on quite a lot. So probably going to do it at quite a high level. Um, so yes, please ask any questions. That's probably the best way um, to get through this. So maximizing impact, I'll start with just some tips. I should point out, um, we do tend to like to use the word um, impact because success can kind of come in different forms. And so we like to think of it in terms of impact because you might have different types of impact depending on the type of initiative you've got. Um, and also it kind of goes beyond some of those surface level views of, you know, it's not just looking at adoption stats. It's actually what does that adoption mean and what is the value that brings? So that's why we at HSF really like to use that impact language. So initial thoughts. If you're starting big, you're starting, if you're at the point where you are thinking about, all right, we know we're under pressure to do things differently or if you're a law firm and you're trying to do a more holistic kind of digital transformation and initiative, uh, often it is quite daunting to think about where to start. So um, an opportunity identification and analysis is always, always a great activity early on. But the point I really want to make here is to please start with strategy, um, whether it is obviously I'm assuming there are people from from in house, potentially sole practitioners and we see people from law firms here. Um, the strategy doesn't necessarily need to be um, at a a company-wide level, although obviously hopefully your company or your firm has one, you can define one um, at, in your team that hopefully aligns with what your organisation is trying to achieve. And really the reason that I think that strategy is so important is it becomes your true north, um, your guiding star, so that no matter what kind of uh, initiatives you're looking at, um, no matter if you're 18 months, two, three years in, um, and you realise there's been a broad proliferation of activities and, and it's kind of a bit like, you, you know, um, you feel like you don't really have control and people don't know really which direction they're heading in. Um, a strategy can really help make that easier for you. And so it kind of um, make sure that the impact you're ha having is able to build on each other and heads um, kind of takes you forward in a certain direction. And so that's why I personally think the strategy is so important and can really help you to maximize impact. Kind of the next stage on that, often after you've done that analysis, Pete, is prioritization. Now, the visual I have here is very much from an in-house perspective. So forgive me, anyone that's not in-house. Um, but I guess the point I want to make here is um, you've you've done that view. You might have a broad range of opportunities you want to look at. Or look, in some instances, it might be like, you know, the type of example that QIC discussed this morning, in which case, you know, ignore some of this. Um, but if you are looking more holistically, prioritization will also help you to improve the, the amount of impact and also can help you kind of build um, on the work uh, that you're doing. So you can kind of have an incremental approach. And I guess if you're wondering, 
what does she mean? Um, so I guess when it comes to prioritisation, uh, one thing at HSF that we are trying to do, um, which everyone is doing, is, is to be a um, more data-driven organisation, to have more data-driven decision-making and also to help our clients when it comes to insights from data. Now, that sounds like a very daunting thing to try to be um, a data-driven organisation. Um, so you think about, you might break that down and think about where to start. So we've really started where we have structured data. So either financial data or where we already use technology that is capturing and using data. And then you're able to, you know, have, for example, have predictive pricing in the disputes context and then be able to build on that. And then you can lead to the more kind of really complex and daunting aspects of, of data. So I guess that's why I think prioritization can really help you maximize your impact, um, particularly if you're thinking kind of long term and looking for a mix of, of quick wins and how you can make really substantial change. I'm hoping some of you um, are having a little chuckle because I know I chuckled when I prepared this is I've just talked about how important strategy is and now I'm saying that culture eats strategy for breakfast. But the point I am trying to make here is not that you should not have a strategy. Um, otherwise, why would I have just talked about it? It's more the fact that if you are going to um, build a strategy and you're going to going to try to work on digital transformation or innovation, um, culture is so important. It is the most important thing. And in fact, the amount of effort that you put into a strategy, you'll need to put at least 10 times that effort into your culture. Um, so many things um, will live or die because of culture. And I guess if you're wondering, I hear you, uh, but I don't know what to do about it, honestly, just the smallest things. Um, what I love about so many of the teams throughout HSF, what they have done, I'm talking about our legal teams, um, they've got a standing agenda item where they talk about tips and tricks that they have learnt and um, they share new technologies. They are sharing even, even little things like, oh, you know, one of them um, cottoned on that you can convert text to smart art in PowerPoint and it's made their lives so much easier in creating corporate structures like it can be really basic things like that and so they start developing the culture of being open to new things of experimenting of learning um, and and you need almost hundreds of those micro things to start building a culture find the people in your team who do it naturally and and go from there but I cannot stress how important culture is and it, it takes more effort than I think most people um, prepare themselves for. This one shouldn't need to be here. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I was like, surely everyone knows this by now. But unfortunately, I so often see people um, neglect at least two, if not three of these aspects when it comes to um new initiative, new ways of working and, and solutions more broadly. Um, if you just focus on the tech, um, the chances of you having big impact, unfortunately, are very low. You, at a minimum, need to also be focusing on the people and the process. Um, and as I just mentioned before, data is such a large component. Data is built into a lot of tech these days. And so it makes sense to think about that upfront as well. So this one's really just a reminder. This is probably the last tip on the maximizing impact that I will share with you. And I realize this is quite a whirlwind, um, but this is probably um, the thing I'm most proud of um, and our team, uh, our legal ops team and HSF, at, I, I think we've gotten quite good at this. And so hopefully others are already doing it or can at least learn from this. And it's to capture the value of what you've done at every stage of an initiative. So I've got a very simplified view of um, an initiative here where we're essentially using the design thinking cycle. And so even if you get to a point where you've um, decided to to listen to a client, you know, you might have an idea to have an app in response to a regulatory change. Um, you've talked to your clients, you've listened to them and, and coming out of that, they've, they've kind of told you that actually they don't want the advice provided um, through the app. They actually want to hear from you, but um, where they would, uh, you know, lack some tech support is actually then on how they can manage the change thereafter. You don't then kind of abandon that and think, well, that was a waste of time and that, that app's not going anywhere. That is incredibly useful insights. Um, and even um, 
respect irrespective of the fact they've told you in a new direction which is amazing if you don't get that in this instance try to find a way to capture all your learnings make sure it can be shared so that you can build upon it I find other um other areas so for example scientists people in RID they do this much better you know you, you kind of prove or disprove a hypothesis um they do literature review um they it's they try to learn from everything they do. And I think we could do better uh, at that generally as a sector, but it's something that I feel at HSF we do really well. So you try to have a deliverable at the end of every stage um, and you'll be able to learn from it. And um, yeah, I think that's something that can really maximize impact because what we're trying to show is that there is value in the work you do in every single stage, not just, and I know this is anyone who read the description of, um, this session will probably have a laugh because I made it sound like if you don't deliver a solution and have 100% adoption, what have you ever done? I actually don't agree with that at all. I think you can show value in every step, in every stage, and um, that can have impact, certainly in, in the long run. So last little tidbit there. Now I'm going to get into measuring impact. Um, this is a topic quite uh, close to my heart. It's just something that I have certainly seen um, being done pretty poorly, I, I, I will admit, particularly in a, in a legal context. So I'm going to try to share some, some tips with you all. This is a quote from uh, Douglas W. Hubbard. Um, essentially, uh, what he's saying is that... Um, a measurement needs to have some effect on decisions or behaviour um, to be important and relevant. If not, it has no value. Um, and I do truly believe that. So we don't want metrics for metrics sake. Um, they need to have some effect. Um, and particularly, I think that his language around decisions and behaviour is, is a really important one and something for people to remember. And it builds on my next point, which is then, well, how do you choose the relevant metrics? What you really need to be thinking about is what is important to stakeholders and what aspect of um, that will the solution likely change? So if you are creating, I'm just thinking, um, we created a legal privilege app, which is, you know, essentially a, a tool that's available um, uh, just for, for people to access through our internet site. It is not an efficiency tool. So you'll see here there's things around time and financials. That's not really the goal for it at all, um, is to help people have easier access to information. Um, also, I guess, just so people um, are more aware of, of what we do as well. Um, and so for that, really, you'd want to know what the experience was like for people um, I'm a big fan of a Lacquer scale, which I'll mention in a moment. Basically, it's like having a smiley face um, option when, you, when you're when you walking through the airport, for example. Um, I will just quickly add here, and I feel like I'm geeking out a bit, but quantitative and qualitative data, I think they are both incredibly important. You need both. Quantitative is so useful because it allows for greater comparison. Um, if you're getting 100... Um, 100 surveys back uh, for something you've deployed and it is all open word it is going to be a nightmare to go through that and actually try to pull out um, how people are consistently feeling because someone can use good and someone can use okay and how do you actually align those so for comparison quantitative is brilliant um, if you're unable to kind of get things to a quantitative level then even with qualitative using categories instead of open-ended also really helps with that comparison point and then you leave open-ended questions really just to help tell the story so some of you you're like I didn't realize this get this specific bear with me a moment um, so this is what I mean when I say like at scale it's generally kind of like a one to five type of thing as I mentioned it can be like if you're at the airport and there's a, you know from a sad face to a super smiley face um, these are incredibly useful. Please use them um, if you're not already. Um, they will just make it so much easier if you compare. One down the bottom here, you can see around overall experience. I use it for everything um, because it means not only can you compare um, diff between different responses, you can compare um, a current state 
um, to a future state. Um, you can pair between different types of solutions um, as well. So I absolutely love these types of metrics. Saying that, I do acknowledge that um, a lot of the time you don't have the opportunity to ask people like, hey, they've just, you know, uh, used a solution to save time and now you're asking them to do this really big survey obviously that would make no sense at all so sometimes just just pick the question like I said that's most relevant that's going to highlight what it is um, that you want to learn and then last point because I realize um, I'm out of the 15 minutes so my last point is really don't forget to communicate um, impact um, I am such a big fan of the book Switch by Dan and Chip Heath. And I think Anne is listening and she'll be having a laugh right now because we're literally just talking about this. Um, but essentially you need to appeal to both the rational and the emotional side of people. Um, using data can really help with that. But I think people so often then once they do have metrics, they become so focused on the numbers and sometimes forget the story and the emotional connection. And as you can see from the quote here, if you want to change people's minds, you have to talk to their elephants. So you really do need to get there, that emotional connection. And also just don't forget to communicate. Often we capture these metrics and don't even share it. So that was an absolute whirlwind, Mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you. And we are out of time, sadly. I'd love to be able to like continue the discussion. And we can. We have a networking session right now, which you can join. And I'll be keen to ask you some questions, Danny, if you do have time. I understand you might have to go on to facilitate. No, no, else. no. I knew I was going to take up the whole 15 minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So please, everyone here on this, please jump over to kind of an end of day um, networking session, um, including with the Nyota team and other presenters from the day. And it will be great to continue the conversation there. Thanks so much, Danielle, for taking the time out to talk with us today at Nyota Network. No worries. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.